T.S. Eliot once said that the way the world ends is not with a bang, but with a whimper. Not many people actually know this, but he was actually referring to the Fairly Odd Parents when he wrote that. You see, when he was around, Fairly Odd Parents was his world. It was like his favorite show ever. He'd marathon it every day. But he was a pretty wise poet, so he could see some things that were happening to it. Okay, that might not be entirely true, uh, but let's face it, you don't have to be a literary genius to see that the Fairly Odd Parents has been on life support for a very long time. At some point, the show decided to add poof to the show, the baby of Cosmo and Wanda. They even made a 44 minute special about this, something only usually reserved for the big specials, like Channel Chasers or Schools Out the Musical. But it seemed like a new character would be the perfect mix of energy to spice up the show. The only problem was that Poof was a baby, and babies can't do much of anything at all, especially in cartoons. Generally speaking, in the realms of media, babies are objects. They're there to be a problem in the episode, and that's it. Usually because the protagonist of the episode doesn't have any skills in babysitting. Babies can't talk, they rarely have any agency, and the only kind of comedy you tend to get from babies is either by having them act not like babies, for example, Maggie's talent with guns from The Simpsons, or gross out. Lots of messy diapers barfing and burping when a baby comes along. Of course, Fairly Odd Parents did realize this, so they added another new character. Anti-poof. Oh, oh, I I'm sorry, I meant foop. I, I don't get it. Anti-Cosmo isn't on sock. Then again, the only thing consistent about the show past season 8 is its terrible quality. Foop is basically a G-rated Stewie Griffin. Do you know how you kill a joke like Stewie Griffin? Well, make him not be able to swear, engage in actual violence, or make him G-rated. So, this was generally a bad idea. Some people would have claimed that in order to keep a show as old as Fairly Odd Parents Fresh, you would have had to keep adding new characters to spice things up. However, there were problems with that excuse. For a character that was meant to spice things up, Poof was actually semi-kicked off the show for a while, in an episode that I had never heard about. Poof actually went to a place called Spellementary School, where he would learn to do magic properly. And guess what? Poof went there too, because anti-fairies are there just to add more characters now. Who cares about continuity, am I right? The other problem is, while new characters kept getting added, old ones got more forgotten. Besides Crocker, we stopped seeing pretty much all of the secondaries. Chester and AJ? Who the f Fuck are they? Trixie? Never heard of them. Chip Skylark? No way. Do you know how much effort it takes to actually write songs for a cartoon? Now, I wouldn't want to be negative, but I must say that that's a pretty stupid excuse. Even if it wasn't a stupid excuse, I can say that this particular solution uh, didn't solve the problem very well. If you had a character in Season 8, and that one doesn't work well enough that you need to add another character in Season 9, and that one doesn't work well enough that you need to add another one in Season 10, it, it seems like you might want to try something else. Uh, but what do I know? I've never had a cartoon on its last legs before, so maybe I'm not in the best position to critique exactly what to do in such a situation. Although I can point out that I have seen something similar work in other cartoons. Futurama added a couple of characters in its time, Hubert and Dwight. Not only were they new characters in a show, but they were child characters in a show aimed at adults. And that worked out great! Although maybe that's not a good example since the show was fairly fresh. Hubert was added in Season 2. But what about PC Principal from South Park, added in like Season 19? He's one of the few things that most people actually like from the modern seasons. Alright everyone, listen up. In order for better understanding, we've asked students of Canadian origin to introduce you to their culture and- HEY LESLIE, SHUT YOUR F***ING MOUTH! Now, I've never injected a character into a show that was past season 8, but other people have, and they managed to not kill any goodwill towards their show that previously existed. The last time we checked in on the Fairly Odd Parents, it was, uh... Sophie! Not doing so hot. But if you can believe it, the show actually got worse. Since the show ended, I wanted to see if it ended on a good note. I doubted that it would have since I had seen several reviews of season 10 uh, prior to see what was up with it. Uh, but then I watched season 10 for myself and I wanted to die. I wanted to look at the last episode of The Fairly Odd Parents, the finale. But believe it or not, this show actually didn't have a grand finale. I mean, it did, it was called Channel Chasers, but the actual show did not leave off on a grand final episode. As I said before, it ended with a whimper and not a bang in the most realistic way possible. It was thrown onto a secondary channel that the network didn't care about and wallowed out its final few episodes, which is just about the worst possible fate for a cartoon. They did make one final change in order to try and get some bare bones attempt at relevance. The show went to Flash. Now, there's nothing wrong at all with Flash. While it's often used as a way to make animation cheaper to produce, it's a tool like any other and can be used poorly or can be used great. A lot of crap has been made with Flash. Like, a lot 
lot of crap. Like, a lot, a lot of crap. It's also been used to animate some really good shows, like Friendship is Magic or Symbionic Titan. It's okay to use Flash. A at the very least, that's something that I would have said, like, five years ago. Flash is actually kind of outdated now. Every animator that I talk to nowadays uses Toon Boom, and it has largely replaced Flash in the animation industry. Ignoring all of that, though, the animation in the latter half of Season 10 is of a very confusing quality. It's definitely technically better than the traditional hand-drawn animation the show has used since the beginning, but that's kind of a problem with a show that's been going on so long. When a show's been going on for 10 seasons, you get used to how the characters look and how they move. It takes a very high budget to make this kind of higher animation budget jump. The Simpsons did it fine, but I can't think of many other examples. In season 10 of The Fairly Odd Parents, the movement is too fluid, the characters look too clean, and it all comes across as jarring. This is actually another problem I had with the MLP movie. Uh, yes, the animation looks much better, it it's definitely of higher quality. But these characters look just different enough from their original models, you know, the ones that everyone is used to, that they look very jarring and I just want to look away. Something just looks off about it. But believe me when I say that the animation is the least of the show's problems. Since the show didn't have a grand finale, I decided to look at one of the final 22 minute episodes, and that was the first episode that they went to Flash. It was called Certified Super Sitter. How was it? Poof, you're home uh. and you grew a body! <laughs> <laughs> how was it? The <laughs> okay, how, how, how was it? Uh, this is the worst episode of a children's cartoon that I have ever seen in my entire life. No, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being hyperbolic. I am not exaggerating. Yes, this episode is worse than It's a Wishful Life, Arnold Betrays Iggy, Pet Sitter Pat, One Course Meal, and Mega Babies. I would rather watch Newborn Cooties, both of them back to back, then watch this episode again. And I, I know I'm probably gonna get some pushback for saying that. After all, I know that the Fairly Odd Parents created a lot of people's childhoods. I mean, maybe you could argue that it even created mine. But if that kind of notion was true, then Certified Super Sitter killed my childhood. Poof, you're home uh. and you grew a body! 11 seconds. 11 seconds is the amount of time that I first watched this episode before I decided that, you know what? I need to take a break. Maybe this is an episode that I don't want to watch. This was the first joke of the episode that made me quit. So, Poof is coming home from Spellementary School, and Cosmo doesn't know who the hell Poof is. He mentioned Poof literally five seconds ago, but he doesn't know who the hell Poof is. When Timmy comes in, Cosmo thinks it's Poof. Then Cosmo thinks that Chloe is Poof. Then Cosmo thinks that a kangaroo is Poof. Then Cosmo thinks that a picture is Poof. Then Cosmo thinks that a balloon is Poof. We get the same joke five times in one goddamn minute. Now, personally, I've never been pregnant before, but I'm fairly sure that no matter how dense in the head you are, it's a pretty unforgettable experience. Especially since, you know, Cosmo got to the labor stage. But that's right, we're on season 10. We gotta make the characters dumber and dumber and dumber. Why? Because that's the only way to keep the characters interesting. Oh wait, there are actually other ways to do that. Maybe introduce the audience to a few more character traits. Maybe these characters have got some kind of history, or family, or hope or dreams. Oh wait, that requires time and effort, and Mama Cosma hasn't appeared in like five seasons. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess we can't really do that here. Why did this particular joke make me quit? I don't know. Maybe because this joke was used five times in the span of a minute. Maybe because a character being stupid in and of itself is not a joke. Although it's becoming a distressingly common misconception at this point. Maybe it's just because I hate Cosmo's voice. Yeah, here's something that I've never brought up before, but I think more people should. Can we please stop pitching up characters' voices? This has happened on both SpongeBob and the Fairly Odd Parents, and I, for the life of me, cannot figure out why. For some godforsaken reason, people decide that they need to make certain characters sound like they've been smoking helium balloons. Listen to season one Cosmo and season 10 Cosmo back to back. Time to use the most powerful magical weapon in my arsenal. Me! <laughs> Poof, you're home and you have a stomach pocket! <laughs> Who you got a good right hand? You got that from your mother! Notice only one of them makes you want to cut your ears off with a potato peeler. I don't get why shows do this. I've never seen anyone like this. This is something that only people complain about, and it's something that only happens after a show gets popular. It's never the cause of a show's popularity. And it makes the joke of stupidity worse. Stupid characters are a lot funnier if they appear respectable from the outset, which you can't do with this kind of voice. So let's talk about the non-GMO kale-fed elephant droppings in the room. Chloe has had a few episodes to sink in, and she's become acquainted with the rest of the cast. I'm sure you're wondering if her outing in Fairly Share Scare was accurate to her overall being. Maybe they fixed up her character so she's not just a Mary Sue anymore. More. Did they maybe give her a flaw? See? I try too hard to fix things and I end up 
annoying people destroying cities, and then no one wants to be my friend! A real flaw? Actually, yes, they did. They gave her a pretty serious character flaw. One that, once again, makes me want to cut my ears off of the potato peeler. Every so often, Chloe will shout something. Timmy, you know that is not a certified Super Sitter approved fun Timmy! I love those cozies! I don't even know what I am anymore! Stop pressuring me! I can't save the world! I know that now! This is her character. Her entire character. It's annoying as hell. This show has a problem with running gags. For example, through this episode, Punchy the Kangaroo is going to punch people while saying SHRIMP ON THE BARBIE. Do you know how many times this happens in the span of 22 minutes? You don't want to know how many times this happens in the span of 22 minutes. Seriously, every single episode of Fairly Odd Parents has multiple running gags. Even the 11 minute ones. Poof comes home and he's actually able to talk now. I brought some friends home. Well, one friend and one harbinger of doom. It's gonna be huge! You know what? I'll be right back. This episode is just stressing me out too much. I need to take a bath with a toaster. This bus brings along Foop, and... Hello and howdy! I'm Sammy Sweet Sparkle. I can take anything sour and make it sweet. Whatever the hell that is. Poop wants to cause chaos because that's his one character trait. And then he invites Cosmo and Wanda to a restaurant that he poops up. Because Cosmo and Wanda are going to a restaurant, Chloe steps up to babysit as the certified super sitter. And she became one in the time that it took to jump from the diving board to the pool float. More like certified super shitter, am I right? <laughs> also, the French restaurant is a black hole. I know what you're thinking. Doesn't that black hole look really flat to the point where it's very distracting? But you have to remember, when this episode came out, people didn't actually know what a black hole looked like. I mean, could you imagine if we had the faintest idea of what it actually did? This effect would look absolutely horrendous. So, right around this time was the second time that I had given up watching this episode. You know how I hate the dumbass dad trope? Like, ignoring any social implications. It's just the most overdone thing in the world. So, in this episode, Mr. Turner is a baby. I'm not joking. He wears a safety helmet, and Mrs. Turner carries him around with a baby leash. Dad, what's with the helmet? I don't really need it. It's just a fashion choice. You, you know what this is? exactly what I thought when I first saw this. This is what I would give as an over-the-top example to show how stupid the trope itself is. Like, an example of how beaten into the ground that this trope is. It's not funny, it, it's just sad. Would you mind watching Timmy's dad? He looks like a handful, but a certified super sitter always says yes! So, someone who works with kids always says yes. I can't possibly see how that'll go wrong. Seriously, for the love of God up in heaven, edit your damned scripts. So, a lot of nothing happens and then Vicky comes over. You know, there actually is something funny about this episode. Just one thing, it's a small thing. The people who wrote it must be like the only people on earth to have never seen a Fairly Odd Parents episode. Timmy's mom left Timmy's dad to get babysat by Chloe. The only people that Chloe was babysitting were fairies. You know, those things that will disappear if their existence is revealed. Timmy's dad doesn't seem to care about these floating things. Vicky doesn't even care about these floating people when she gets there. Although, to be fair, this is a consistent problem with season 10 of Fairly Odd Parents. The fairies are frequently seen and even interact with human adults. Hell, Crocker himself even talks to several of them. This should not be difficult. Is it me? M maybe it is me. But one thing that I personally can do is keep my goddamn continuity straight. Do you know what a show is like? when it doesn't have any rules whatsoever, like literally anything can happen at any time, and there's no consistency with anything, the world, the characters, etc. The show is boring as fuck. It's impossible to have an actual conflict or get attached to anything. In fantasy, you can make any rules that you want, but for God's sake, you have to stick with them. When Chloe hugs Foop, she invokes some kind of kindness within him. If you actually know the Fairly Odd Parents continuity, like the writers of Fairly Odd Parents should, then you know that anti fairies are basically just pure evil. They're also the exact opposite of their fairy counterparts. So either Poof is evil deep down inside, which would be an interesting interpretation of the character, or they're just picking and choosing which of their own rules that they want to follow. Seriously, just because one is a ball and the other is a brick does not make them opposites. Remember Channel Chasers? In that episode, as soon as Vicky was revealed to be evil, she was fired. In this episode, not only does Mr. Turner see that Vicky is evil, she is evil towards him and he does literally nothing. The ding dong sound means someone's on the phone! I'm sorry, but I don't find jokes mocking people with special needs very funny. Nice try, twerps! Too bad for you, I've brought my patented tricky Vicky portable trap door! <laughs> <laughs> portable 
trap door. Portable trap door. Okay, this is the fairly odd parents, not dungeons and dragons. Non-magical human beings can't just pull out a fucking portable hole. I mean, I probably shouldn't be complaining, but apparently, Vicky managed to build a saw reference underneath the Turner's house. Hello, this is the mysterious Mr. Anter, silly of a problem that has been plaguing hundreds of television shows. The risk is especially pronounced in shows that have been going on for four or more seasons. And that is the abuse of the suspension of disbelief. Many writers do poke and prod this thing, and sometimes that can be particularly necessary to get out good stories. The writers that become particularly jaded start kicking it around until it nearly dies. Some of them actively try and kill it. Or, even worse, some of them neglect it until it starves and dies of its own accord. So, I'm asking you to look into your hearts and please donate to the Association of Writers who know what the fuck they're doing. And for the cherry on top of your misery Sunday, watch this! Timmy's still an average kid that no one understands. Chloe's his new neighbor, and she's ruining all these plans. Wow, Vicky is pure evil, but you already knew that. You've probably also seen her do things like eat cookies in front of everyone else, and even use her wards as furniture. Like, I've seen this exact same joke before on The Fairly Odd Parents. And again, it, it is the typical Christian wholesome themes that this show is known for, like magic, which the Bible states that God doesn't like, or ghosts, which the Bible states doesn't exist. It, it's a strange little recipe of season 10. Everything, and I mean Everything in season 10 of Fairly Odd Parents is either watered down Fairly Odd Parents cliches or the most aggravating things imaginable. Nothing in between. Also, Chloe has a lightsaber. There, there's no point to even going on. That's that's basically most of the substance, for lack of a better word. This episode is a tedious mess. While it wasn't the last episode of Fairly Odd Parents, either in production order or in airing order, it really feels like the show's moment of death. There are tons of video essays discussing where and when this or that show has died. Some of them are more on the money than others, but I've never felt that feeling that a show has died more than I feel it here. Certified Super Sitter is the moment that Fairly Odd Parents died. It's a shame, too, for a show that very well did create my childhood. Oh, wait, my childhood sucked.